I am outraged. So I read this morning on like Elon Musk's Twitter feed that Stanford University's IT department said that we should stop using the term American to refer to people from the United States of America. And if you've been on this channel for a while, you, you might have seen a poll that I did about this word. And, and I'm not going to be an advocate here for changing your language. You can do whatever you want, but I think it's important for those of us who are living in Mexico or looking to live in Mexico to understand that the language that we use when referring to people from the United States as Americans can sometimes be hurtful to people from the other 40 some countries in America. Of course, we who are citizens of the United States are from the United States of America, being that there's a whole other places that are in America. Now, you might be really tied to the word American and really love it, and that's fine, but I think we need to look at the people who are less well off than us and see if they are being harmed. Like, I think it's really, you know, maybe I'm too woke, you might say, but it's really when people are very privileged, claim that they're being harmed by being forced to use language for people who are being harmed on a daily basis and would prefer us to use different words. It's a little shallow. It, it, it's, it's a little shallow to me to think that somehow I'm being harmed when someone asks me to use less hurtful language. Now, I, I think you can, as, as comedians say, you can punch up all you want. So if there are people that are better off than you, that are richer than you, that are stronger than you, that's fine. You know, you can, you can say, you can make fun of them and whatnot and use language that might be inappropriate to describe those that are that are at a higher level of privilege than you. But to use language that is hurtful to people who are less well off than you, that's just a little weird that people would defend using that language. Now, I call myself an American every once in a while. I talk about Americans. I try to find the right language. Sometimes I use gringo. Some people don't like gringo. Uh, but it's maybe what's uh, maybe the most hurtful to me is the amount of people who defend bend this language as their right to use this language. And maybe you do have a right to use this language, but as people who care about Mexicans or people in other parts of the Americas, I think we need to, you know, we're, we're living in their country. And if we're doing something that's hurtful to them, I think we need to maybe adjust. Now, not every Mexican is going to be hurt by people using the term American. They might just think like, oh, you're kind of an arrogant person from the United States because you think you're the only people from America. They may not say anything. They probably won't say anything because for the most part, Mexicans are very polite people. They'll just think it and they will have maybe a more negative view of people from the U.S. Once again, I'm not trying to pass judgment. I'm trying to explain, though, the use of language and how it can be hurtful to other people. So let's go Let's go over to, I want to talk about the poll that I did earlier, but I want to go to the list of words that Stanford published that Elon and other people were, were so angry about. If you haven't read this list of words, it's a really good thing to, to read because it will help you understand maybe some of the background behind some of these words. And I'm sure that everyone who's watching this, uh, maybe a lot of people have stopped watching already, but everyone has spoken a certain way in the past that they thought was okay. And now is a little more awakened to how that could be hurtful. I, I think society is moving towards more enlightenment and more acceptance of other people and less desire to hurt people. And if you can just change a word that you use, how easy is that? And it really, it pains me that people would fight back against changing a word that they use. Because that's a really easy change to make, to make someone else's life a little less hurtful. So let's look at some of these words. And, and this is developed by their IT folks because the world of IT is a very male-dominated world. And, you know, people tend to 
maybe speak a certain way. And most people who are educated, I feel, would be likely to change their behavior if they understood something. So a good one that was pointed out to me is the word gypped. So I, I feel gypped because I didn't get, you know, that someone cheated me. That's from gypsies. So there's a whole group of people who are essentially being stereotyped when you use that word. Or Jude. Here's, a, here's even a better one because I think this one is, a, is an older word. Uh, that people accepted. People would used to say, oh, you know, my uncles would say, oh, I, I'm, he Jewed me down. I would hope that most people today would say, you know what, that that is kind of offensive. Maybe we should stop saying that. So a lot of the things that are on this list are maybe the things that people are like, oh yeah, in the future, they'll say, wow, I can't believe we did that. So might as well just get a little further down the line now and be one of the early adopters. Here's one I like, committed suicide. And this is something that I, as a person who suffers from a mental illness, I suffer from depression, if you don't know that. This is something that I, I learned a number of years ago is to stop using the term committed suicide because it's like you committed a crime. Um, this is how a person with a mental illness dies. Uh, so they suggest died by suicide. It probably, if you're not someone who suffers from a mental illness, you might think, ah, what does it matter? What does it matter? But if you are someone who suffers from a mental illness, and so many of us suffer from this in silence, why not change that language just a little bit? Here's what lame was like, instead of using the word lame, you could use the word, you know, uncool, because lame implies that someone with a disability is uncool when you use it that way. Another similar one, retarded. Hopefully people have figured this one out already. Hopefully it's down on this end of the spectrum of people saying, oh, you know, we shouldn't really use the term retarded to mean something that's uncool because it is harmful language to people with mental disabilities. Hispanic. This is a new one for me, especially as someone who does live part-time in Mexico, is that Hispanic, when referring to people who live in, in kind of uh, Latin America, does bring back the idea that this area was colonized by Spain. So maybe that is language that we could stop using. Also, the Sea of Cortez here in uh, Baja California, in Baja California Sur. Some people who are Mexican don't like that language because Cortez was a conqueror who conquered a lot of Mexico. So they refer to the, I believe it's the Sea of California or the Bay of California. Okay, let's get back to Americans. And there will be a link down below so that if you are interested in kind of being a little more awakened with your language, feel free to go to that link and kind of learn some of these things that you might be saying that might be uh, harmful to people who are less well off than you are. I asked people if uh, on my channel, which is mostly people from the US and Canada and some Mexicans, I asked, what do you think about using the term American to refer to people from the US? And I broke it down to people who are from Mexico and people from the United States or outside Mexico. And overwhelmingly, it people from outside Mexico said that it's not uh, offensive. 65% said it's not offensive. Outside Mexico, 6% said it was offensive. So the vast majority of people from outside Mexico either are not offended or just wish people would use a different term maybe. But people inside Mexico, 5% of the total, so said that it was offensive and 7% said it wasn't offensive. So uh, what's the math on that? Something like 30% maybe of people who said they were from Mexico found it an offensive term. Now, feel free, like I said, to continue using the term American, but note that a significant portion of people who live in the country that this channel is about find that offensive. And also one of the big differences between Mexico and the United States in particular is this idea of being offensive. I think people in Mexico do not want to be offensive, even if it means that they have to work a little bit harder. Whereas I think a big portion of the United States, it's my freedom to talk the way I want. I don't care if I'm offensive. So not only are we trying to not offend the people whose country we're in, it's also trying to culturally adapt by not being offensive. So it's kind of a double whammy when we're talking be between Mexico and the United States. I also looked at the term gringo and 80% of people said it wasn't offensive and other people thought it, you know, offensive or would rather use a different term. I'm more likely to use the term gringo and this is just me explaining my position. Like I said, everyone can have their own position on this is that as a gringo, 
I am part of the privileged class of people when it comes to the relationship with Mexico. So it's kind of self-deprecatory, I guess, to use the term gringo. But most people, gringo is not a negative term necessarily, unless you use it in a negative tone of voice or you say uh, pinche gringo or something like that. And once again, this is not punching down. That's my justification for being okay with using the word gringo. But I do try to use it less often now and use uh, people from the United States or people from Canada, different, different things like that. It, one person actually commented something about, do you even know the origin of the word America? And so I said, well, you know, I know like from history class, it was um, Amerigo Vespucci or something who uh, took a ship over and, and kind of like named America or we figured out that it was a, it wasn't India, that it was a different continent. And so I did a little bit of research though to find out. And actually the history is that Amerigo Vespucci did a number of trips over to the new continents of America. He actually kind of, it was called um, all of, it was called America at the time, not North America and South America, because it is just one continuous piece of land. And I'm not sure exactly when he hit the, uh, the continent, but he figured it out, I think it was somewhere around Brazil, where he figured out that he was on a new continent because he had crossed south of the equator and realized that the constellations weren't what they should look like if he were hitting India. So really, the kind of historic claim to the word America based on who discovered it and whose name we're named after should really be down in South America. But because Americans are probably the most privileged people on the continent and we've used, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be American. There's so many things that we've talked about uh, historically using the term that it's kind of been claimed by the people from the United States and people from other countries use different terms. So this was a little bit different video. You might find it political. I think it's strange talking about language and and talking about being kind to people becomes a political thing. I really, you might think that I am woke. And if we look at the word woke and awakened, I do hope that I am more awakened than I was in my past and that I am constantly improving and becoming a better person, becoming more kind to other people, becoming more accepting of other people, kind of like more of the Mexican culture. So yeah, if that, if that means woke, then that is something I label that I will apply to myself. You know, when it comes to being American, you know, saying American, saying I'm an American, I don't look down on people who say that language. It is something new. It just came out, I think, yesterday that, you know, in the, the, that Stanford said, you know, we should stop using this language, you know, in the IT department at Stanford University. It is something uh, that I think everyone should consider, especially those who plan on spending time in Mexico and will be spending a lot of time talking to Mexicans. And so if you're interested, the word is Estadounidenses, people from the Estados Unidos. That is how officially people are recognized in in Mexico. If you are from the United States and you have to fill out a form, you can write Estadounidenses because that is the legal definition of people who come from the United States, just like Canadienses, I think, is from Canada. I hope you found this video at least helpful, even if you disagree with it. Please let me know in the comments down below your feelings and uh, let me know kind of what you think. And if you plan on unsubscribing, leave a message down below before you hit the unsubscribe button. Otherwise, if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and check out one of these videos over here that you might find just a little bit less controversial. Hasta luego.